In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can take a picture and picture and make a series of numbers scroll from the bottom to the top as though you were tuning in to certain frequencies or certain kinds of numbers. This comes as a request of one of my subscribers who presented the challenge to me, and I think I've got a useful way figured out on how to do this. So please look at the following example, and then we'll show you how to build this. It might help you in creating something like this or something slightly different that you might find useful in some of your productions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my Word document on the screen. And with the Word document here, you see I've listed everything that would occur in the course of the video. Some of these are duplicates just for the sake of convenience. Now the next thing I want to do is use the Windows key plus the S key, and that will create my SNP here. And so what I want to do is create a SNP. And so I'm going to take my, my cursor and I want, want to make sure I'm not really tight around the letters. I can be bigger than I want. So I'm going to start it and make a snip about like this. And then in my snipping tool, which I'll drag back on the screen, we have the option to save it. So I can just save it and I can save it as a JPEG or whatever I like. I already have one I'm using called Numbers 2, which I saved it as. And let's assume that we did that a second time. So now I have that document. I can close Microsoft Word. And now we're going to use that in our timeline. What we have, first of all, is the video. I put that on track three. You'll find out why it's there in a minute. The next thing I want to do is I want to take my SNP document and import it into my project. That's what I've done here. We'll take that and we'll drag and put it on track number one and we'll make it as long as the duration of our video clip. Now we can't see it, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some keyframing and some other tools here. So my, I can see how big my document is normally. And what I want to do is temporarily I'm going to turn off my track three clip and I want to see about where I want this and how big I want the letters to look. Let's take something like this and we'll start the document right about here because we're going to scroll through a window in this location. I'm going to click on Edit and I'm going to go to the Opacity value and we're going to dial it back, thin it out a bit. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a mask in my primary document. So I'm going to click back on the primary document. We'll turn it back on. And now I want to create a mask. So in my document, my video on track number three, I'm going to click on mask. And we'll click on this little rectangle. I'm going to invert the mask. And here I have it on top of my series of numbers. That's about where I want it to be. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go, once I have the mask and the size and shape I want, I want to go back to my numbers and click on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to move the numbers from bottom to top. With the image of the numbers selected, I'm going to click on Image, and I'm going to click on Advanced. And this is why I have this shaded a bit. So you can see where they start. Let's start in the first frame. I'm going to click a position value. And so this is where it goes. Now let's assume we want to make it kind of jerk, jump up once. I'm going to go over to the place where I want it to move. And then what I do is I set another keyframe. Only this time I'm going to right click on the position value and say duplicate from previous one. And then I'll move over just a little bit, not far. And now I'm going to move this up. Now I'm going to look at my X value, it's 2.33. And 
And so I'm going to move this up manually and then adjust this so it's just perfect. And now I've changed it. So let's go to the next place where, where we would want an, another number to appear. I'm going to right click, duplicate from previous keyframe. We'll move over just slightly and we'll drag it up the next series of numbers in, into our window. And I, again, I need to adjust this to 233. Three. And then we'll move to another section here. Right click, duplicate from previous keyframe, move over a little bit more, move up again. And again, make sure it's 233. Three. That's enough for now. But you begin to see our process. Now I'm going to take my opacity, go back to my image tools and go opacity, turn it back to 100%. Then if we start at the beginning, we play it, you're going to see numbers go up, numbers go up, numbers go up. And then again, you would time that obviously to where you want it in your video. Now, I'm not satisfied with that only. What I want to do is I want to highlight the bottom number. So that's why I've left track to blank. So I'm going to close this window. And in my media, I'll open the side panel. I'll go to color boards. Let's take something really bright like this pink one. Drag it down to track number two. And now I have a color board. I want to do something with it. I'm going to turn off track three for the moment so I can grab the corners here. And I want this to be as wide. Now I also want to see the mask now. So I'm going to turn that back on. I'm going to take the color board and I'm going to change the opacity. So I'll click on edit on opacity and we'll turn it back. Okay, move it. There we go. Now it's moving. So we just want to highlight the bottom number. So now let's go back to the beginning and watch the, the bottom one should be highlighted every time it plays. And you can make the list as long as you want. You can cycle through. All you need to do is have a large enough image to cover everything in that section of your video. This was an interesting challenge and I hope you find it useful. There may be some techniques you can use for this or other related things when you combine these tools in CyberLink PowerDirector.